Pharaohs and Kings, A Biblical Quest by David M. Rahal, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, it can be said that the Bible is more accurate in terms of this world than you'd expect from pre-modern claims to history. and better than most claims of mythology. But it becomes apparent that while it's generally correct, every other story has some level of inaccuracy. But it's not so as one might think. Some of these inaccuracies are inaccuracies in translation that aren't part of the original. And we find that it becomes necessary to look at outside sources, at outside cultures, to understand the Bible, to fix some of these supposed inaccuracies. And looking at the Egyptian culture is one of them. Now, when I look at this book, um, it's transliterating things in the, our typical way of understanding, it'd be better if they included more of how we read the original language because a lot of these artifact, uh, artifacts that we see, fragments of, um, if you can read those languages, you can, you sometimes, you have to think for a second, wait, is this the right spell? Um, So, you know, making clear by transliteration would be important, important that, um, you know, um, because some of them it would seem like maybe they don't know how to read it because they're not including all the letters or they're including wrong letters. Um, but we also find that there could be different interpretations. Now, this guy... He could be said to be a fundamentalist, and I guess you could say fundamentalist in, without accepting everything the Bible says as literally true, um, referring etymologically and by evidence what this could mean in those cultures and trying to form a general outline of what the case was with these various kings of Israel and the sojourn in Egypt, and when this all happened, um, maybe the details mean something different than what we thought. Um, and what do the Egyptians and, and other cultures have to say that coincides with what was going on? And you end up with a new chronology, uh, as opposed to, which is now far more widely accepted. Um, and... I guess through an understanding of looking at the basic sources rather than the conservative claims, um, it makes things a lot more accessible to one's life. And the use, it allows for the usage of multidisciplined. If all you're doing is memorizing little books of rulings that other people have had, conclusions other people have had, you close off your spiritual tradition. And with my channel, as much as I'll read through a text and sometimes have um, very little commentary, but even my own text, I tend to have some sort of commentary. It's, um, let's see, there's a lot of interesting information to go over, and I just thought it would be important to, you know, list of the index and king's list who the pharaoh was um or who the pharaoh of, of moses is thought to be of course sometimes when we look at the quran and some of these other one uh, other spiritual texts now this doesn't mention the quran at all but sometimes i don't think um but you know There becomes an importance of, 
you know, bringing it into one's life of a particular uh, mythos of understanding and just memorizing other people's understandings is not really actually having understanding. So please look at things from different angles. Come to your own conclusions. If you figured out something that I haven't figured out, um, share it. If you've had an experience that is different or maybe the same as what I've had, um, likewise. <laughs>